thank you so much for having me and uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be here. Um, just call me AIM and as you may have heard or been to my co-working space here in Bangkok or I've been, I show up to our annual conference every June. Uh, I'm sure you uh, might have ran into me and if not, uh, don't be a stranger. But if Andy was the glue to the ecosystem, I would um, consider myself uh, the lubricant that uh, reduces the friction and gets everybody uh, jamming and collaborating and turning strangers into friends uh, in, in our co-working space. So um, without further ado, I've been asked to give a little bit of a talk on my entrepreneurial journey and why I'm super excited to be on this, this project to really help over the, the, the past uh, you know, 10 years, this decade of, of working in, in Thailand, seeing both the challenges uh, but also the opportunities that, that the new decade will bring. So I guess uh, without further ado, um, we'll go on to the next slide. So uh, all, all beautiful photos of uh, Unsplash. I, I hope you like it. So I think um, if you've ever been familiar with uh, a piece of graph, if you've ever attended a hackathon or a startup event, people are always talking about um, this this graph in many forms. Uh, it's popularized by our friends at Techstars, a global accelerator that um, happens to have this thing called the EJ, literally entrepreneurial journey. So I, I couldn't find a much better graph than to explain it because this really reflects how I got started. So hey, I entrepreneurial refugee that was hanging out in the coffee shop in 2011 and was jaded by the lack of internet connectivity on a 2G uh, bandwidth through my BlackBerry and just trying to look for a better way to work. Um, usually it just starts uh, with us trying to scratch a pain point. We see something that bugs us uh, and gets us upset, gets up every day and say, why well, isn't there a better way to commute, to eat, to do something about climate change or a public participation, solve problems, solve problems. So after the or origin, we get started. Pull our sleeve, get our hands dirty, go and talk to people at meetups and research. We get inspired by all the clips that we watch online. We get excited by the possibilities. We usually found the company and, and get started and realize, oh, oh my goodness, I think I got a little bit in over my head and this is overwhelming and it's much harder than I expected. And hopefully somehow magically it will grow and become the industry leaders. They're the rock stars, I, I'd hate to say the unicorns because that's um, usually a, a bad word these days, but definitely the titans and, and the, the folks that would shape the technologies to come. Uh, that said, for the past 10 years in Thailand, we we see so many people go through step one to four, myself included, that all of us get stuck at five, that we somehow go through this valley of death, um, meet so many roadblocks and obstacles, and by the end of it, maybe worked for it for a decade, we're exhausted, jaded, or we just run out of steam, or just become overpowered by um, much more well-funded, fast, nimble competitors. So I guess I've always been curious about this one. Why everything is going right for Thailand, but what's uh, keeping us stuck? So next slide, please. All right, we're just clicking to the right. Uh, so I think we have, there's no need to talk, you know, preach to the choir on what am I connecting and lubricating and getting people connected, but every piece of the puzzle is important. And an ecosystem can only be as strong as the, the weakest link. And we found that in Thailand, we have some things that are reasonably renowned for us. The corporate innovation ecosystem in Thailand is second to none. We have some of the most progressive companies trying to do innovation. But if other parts and other partners were weak or non-existent, then we really have 
kind of a house of cards situation where while we're trying to build all these great innovations, a lot of them will not be sustainable in the wrong run. Uh, and that whatever we've been doing 10 years back, as you can see, has resulted in um, the ecosystem is today. It's gotten much better uh, than when I started out where people were asking, what is a startup angel investor or co-working space? But I, I was, knew that we had so much more potential, but we haven't realized it yet. So that keeps me going to work every day, but also gets me really excited that I think it's about time that there's a, a report like this that's coming out to say, so what, what have we done and how can we continue to move the needle? So I think a lot of people have seen this white paper before. Um, it's no brainer that talent uh, and a large volume of it that's densely located. A lot of this has changed obviously with COVID, but now density can be virtual. Uh, just like in this call where, um, you know, I think everybody is blown away by the sheer fact that it's early, but, you know, tens and hundreds of people have signed up to be participating. Then we've got a great culture of entrepreneurship uh, and, and a lot of young people now, I think in, in many surveys have said that um, they will come out and at some point in their lives, I think in Southeast Asia, Thailand is by far the most entrepreneurial country for youths. Um, and there's no shortage of capital. I'm sure uh, MasterCard will attest to that. Uh, and we do have a lot of work to do on regulation, but we have policymakers that are starting to be more involved and connected and understanding of, of the private sector. And that can be reflected by you know, the, the cabinet reshuffles and Talent 4.0 and whatnot. Uh, so, this is stuff that we know for 10 years, and now we just have to actually get on with it, actually uh, make it happen. So how, how have I done that on my own personal journey? So initially we just started as a co-working space, and we realized that if we didn't create the entrepreneurs, the freelancers and digital nomads that want to use our space, and connect them to business opportunities, help them grow their business, raise funding. Maybe if they get tired, they, they might want to join other teams, be acquired. Then the ecosystem, the co-working space, the initial business we started with would be literally empty. And on top of that, we can't just work on the young entrepreneurs. We know that large enterprises were moving into co-working spaces, um, that there was a lot of room for uh, people spinning off new ventures. And, and we realized that we have to work on this other side as well, because one of the most exciting opportunities that we we're seeing is that large companies have now literally embraced the startup playbook and starting to become much more agile, but with the brand and the resources that they have at their disposal, they're doing, an incredible, phenomenal job. And being able to tie corporations and startups was where we excelled in at, at Hubba and Texas and Ad Impact Collective. So what are some of the examples that we've done to actually make this happen? So obviously support services. Uh, I got myself into a little bit of trouble, joined an impact fund and accelerator out in Korea. Just because so many people were coming to me as, as the co-working head and say, well, Aim, uh, we love your space, but we have literally anywhere between two weeks to three months of runway left. We're looking to raise funding, we're looking to scale, and a lot of the investors that we had pulled out. So I felt that it was always a something I've been asked to do, uh, and we need more of that. I think in Thailand, there's a very few active accelerators left. Um, and we happen to run one ourselves with Deepa as a smart city accelerator at, at Hubba and, and Texas and this one with uh, Impact Collective. So we need more and higher quality. Next. I think uh, programs. Uh, this is a, a snapshot of all the ecosystem leaders in 40 uh, countries that showed up. And moving forward quickly, 
um, running events. Uh, if you ever come to one of our programs, we, we run 60 events in five days. Getting people to connect and learn from one another, uh, other community leaders is very important. And, and more startup programs that actually take people on the entrepreneur journey. I think a lot of people say, say that hackathons or startup training is not important or it's overdone, there's too many. The funny thing is if you ever run a program outside of Bangkok, you realize people are blown away by the experience that everything is concentrated just in Bangkok. Uh, and they wish that more was run. And, and the scale that we run went from 50 people in a room to a thousand attendees uh, in 2018. Supporting more events and great speakers, uh, being able to bring folks like Richard Branson and, and Ben Silberman at interest. We went from 160 people in a room at Texas to 20,000 people. And I'll stop there. Working with large enterprises like the Stock Exchange of Thailand to work on Corporate Innovation Day, to running co-working spaces and accelerators, and spin-offs with enterprises, taking three years to take entrepreneurs to launch their own e-commerce programs, uh, venture builders with the uh, SCG. I think all this, the summary is literally, we could get companies like Grab or Line, who couldn't Yod happen to be one of our investors. A guy like Yod, who used to hang out in our co-working space, had no funding. People didn't believe he was going to make it or become the next Yelp of Thailand. Uh, and don't believe that Thai entrepreneurs can actually succeed and the innovation are that great. And now he's proven that he's likely to be the next Thai unicorn. So what I just like to say is that I've done all of this with literally 20 angel investors and less than a million dollars in funding. So how do we drive the Thai ecosystem post COVID? Because if one organization can do it and still be here to tell all of us in this call that well, it didn't take a lot of money or an incredible resource, and, and I'm glad that MasterCard is supporting us, but we are at a point where the technology and policy and infrastructure of Thailand 4.0 is about to be rebooted, and the landscape is being ready to be shaped by a report like the snapshot and saying, like, how can we do this much better, and what have we done in the past? What can we learn? The remote work trend is amazing. It's giving more people reason to digitize and transform. I think impact tech and inclusive tech is the time is now to shine. And that's why I'm involved with Impact Collective. And corporate venture building, supporting and at some at sometimes replacing just the startup hype and saying, like, let's really build companies that solve ocean plastics. And there's a $1.5 billion out there to invest in solutions. I think that's going to be the driving force to the region. And I'm super excited to be here to support the research. And thank you so much, MasterCard um, and, and everybody. So last thing, I'm an accountant by training, never coded until COVID-19 and built my first website. I built all the businesses six of them, uh, including uh, the latest one that's helping Andy to do this report, literally by reading a book. It's the Bible of our, our ecosystem uh, communities. It's just been released. I don't get, there's no affiliate link. I don't get any money out of this. I'm just saying that if people can just read a book, have never coded in their life and actually build an ecosystem and a thriving business, so can everybody in this call. So I implore you to keep doing what you're doing, continue to support the great work that Andy is doing, and thank you so much, MasterCard Center for, um, you know, uh, and then Allison and the team, and, and Vicky, who's I think our next speaker, for 
the amazing opportunity. Thank you.